probably is where we need to start. Uh, you're standing probably over the bedroll um, and uh, the belongings of the ranger that you saw that was sleeping out in these woods earlier, but now does not seem to appear to be there. And that's, I think, where we'll pick up. So what would you like to do? Well, I have already told the uh, my camp meets what happened. Um, yeah, I believe you went up and told them, but then you okay. went down to check on the other scout. Yeah. So that scout, you had a discussion with her, and then she decided to pack her stuff up because you kind of spooked her a little bit, and she went back into town, and then you were kind of moving back and walking away. So I'll say as you were walking back past, um, cause you had to kind of go past the, where that person was sleeping anyways, which was right about here. I'll ping it on the map to get back to your group anyways. So. Okay. So I'll just, as I'm passing by, I slow down sort of like when you see an accident on the freeway and you have to slow down anyway. So you slow down just a little bit more just so you could see the destruction. I uh, I do the same thing where I just slow down as I'm passing by the bedroll and the things just to see if everything still looks exactly the same um, for when I pass it earlier. And if it does, I'm just going to keep on keeping on uh, to my buddies whom I've woken up and are making a decision as to what they want to do. Okay, yeah, and it does all look the same. Um, the bow is still standing up against the tree. Um, you see a bedroll there, and like even a pack is kind of sitting uh, next to the bedroll. It might have been using it for like a pillow kind of thing. Um, all that stuff's still there. It all looks kind of similar um, to the first time you walked over. You don't see anything that looks changed from just the, the 10 minutes before you were here as you go past it. Okay, so I continue on to our campsites where um, Ardreth, uh, Finn, and our monk are, and Jar, 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 Jarl, that's his name, <laughs> where they are, they all are, and I, uh, and what are you guys doing? How do I find you guys? Are you back asleep? Are you awake? What's going on? I thought we were going back to the inn this evening, but if we had actually spent the entire night there, um, I guess I'll be up against the tree. Still resting. Okay. We'll assume Jarl is uh, meditating until he tells us otherwise. And then Ardris there too. And I'll still be awake. Okay. When Ian yeah, had left. You remember so. that she, you know, 10 minutes ago, she had walked back over yep. to you guys and said, you know, she had heard a ruckus, and now she's coming back, so. Did, okay. did we wake up, or did we go back to sleep, or? Uh, you tell us. She had woken us up when she left. Yeah, I remember she woke us up. But oh, you said she... it's only about 10 minutes, right? Yeah, she only had about a 10-minute conversation with the scout that she went and just talked to. Okay. And I would say it's probably about 4 in the morning at this point. Well, while she was gone, I packed up my bedroll and everything else like that, just in case we had to go do something. I would have stayed up until she came back. So I come back uh, sort of the same way I left, uh, semi-stealthily. Though as I approach you guys, I don't attempt to be stealthy at all. Once I see there's nothing dangerous around. And um, so I approach the Woken people. If everyone's still awake, I just, I talk to you guys in a lowered voice and I say, I went to go see uh, the scout we passed, who passed us earlier. And um, she told me that it's not uncommon for people to just up and disappear. Um, it's believed, it's folklore that, what's his name? Guer, Gueron? Guer, it's pronounced Guerron. Garon. There's a W in there, guys. There's a I'm w, sorry. Yeah, it's like G W A E R O N, but I think it's pronounced Garon. Garon. Gar this place was called Garon Slumber. Garon Slumber. So Garon 
Squareon. <laughs> it sounds like Pokemon. Um, Garon Slumber comes in and takes others and takes those who ask for his guidance and sends them on a mission or a journey. However, uh, I took her to the site where the ranger was taken and uh, she seemed to be surprised that their bow was still there leaning against a tree. So she she has now left the forest um, in precaution. I don't know what you guys would want to do, but uh, I would like to stay here until daybreak and uh, try and uh, just, I guess, convene with Garon um, or just, you know, see if he'll answer my question. Though I doubt it, but, you know, demigods and stuff. But I'd like to stay here and try and speak to him, if them, if possible. I don't know. Disappearing without your bow sounds a lot more suspicious and more like somebody abducted him than a god necessarily came to take him away. Do we do we know anything about that deity with a, a knowledge religion, Dan? Uh, you know that that is the... That is the, you've heard it before, um, Garon Windstrom is known as the god of tracking. And uh, the other name that she uh, would have told you guys the story of, which is one of the reasons you were coming out here, is, is also this forest is protected by Maliki, which is the goddess of forests. And you guys know, you can feel you're in a place of, like, um, not necessarily holiness, but of, 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 natural power because all of the trees here are in the uh, perpetual autumn state so they all have the yellows and the reds type leaves whereas everywhere else in tribor besides this this area of the woods is normal trees you know green and you know whatever other types of trees they are so it's obviously a place of some type of um power from nature and um it's been attributed to Garon, the god of tracking, and Maliki, the goddess of forest. A lot of their followers come to these woods as they believe it's tied to them. And I, that comment I made, I would said out loud to Ian, by the way. The one about uh, that yeah, that it weird. seemed more like the more like a, a mortal being than a god that would take somebody away. Yeah, I feel the same. I. I, I think you're right. It seemed wrong when I heard the rustling and when I saw the tracks, but uh, which is why I, I mean, these are Garon's, this is Garon's forest. This is where, if he's going to appear, this is where he appears. And if he's going to appear any time, it's at night. So if something is awry in this area, um, I would like to see if he knows what it is, if he wishes for us to know what it is, because gods. So that's why I would like to stay here for at least daybreak, which is, should be in a few hours. Yeah, you're probably only an hour and a half off or so from sunrising. I wouldn't did blame you, you guys for wanting to leave. Go did ahead. you see anything at the spot where the scout was besides that his stuff was left behind? It looked exactly how any of our bedrolls are set up, um, except for some very well hidden and covered up tracks. Um, don't mind the ice cream truck that's passing by. I can't close the window. I don't know why it's stuck. Um, Can't be stuck. um, (laughs) I know, right? Let's go. Uh, It's all on me, guys. yeah, except for some tracks of of something that I didn't recognize. I saw drag marks and then those tracks and then nothing. They disappeared to the west? Yeah, straight west. So Finn, do we care enough to pursue the tracks or do we leave it and wait for the gods? Ian, what do you think, Jarl? I'd be fine waiting till the morning if she's lost the tracks already. 
there's no point in wandering through the woods. Indeed, I I agree. I and, would. Uh, I if anything, I think we should go and. As much as I'm loath to go speak to uh, those in the tavern that we uh, went to earlier, follow scouts and rangers and see if any of these occurrences have happened where someone disappeared but left their weapon there, their belongings here. If there's any more rumors of it, if Garon doesn't appear, which is very likely. Perhaps we should see... Uh... The Rothrush Shrendrel. I think she's in charge of the town. She would probably know. It's true. That would put it on the list. <laughs> um, and yeah, is your god been um, in good standing with Garon? I would expect so. Okay. He's okay. friendly to elves and druids and rangers. So is mine. So is my god. Though I'm not as close to them as you are. Um, so... Um, if we're in, agree in agreement, I would like to, uh... Find a... A place close by to everyone. And just sort of, like... I, it's gonna look like I'm going into a trance, but really what I'm doing is... I guess praying to... Garon. And, um... I'm just gonna send... I'm going to send the thought out there into the Aether and ask about just if this is a, a common occurrence. Is this something, uh, is something troubling your forest and those who come here um, seeking your guidance and stuff like that? And that's what Ian's going to be doing. Okay. Well, if we're going to wait for an hour or two, I'm here. I'm going to pull my bedroll back out and try to get some more sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'll sleep until dawn and then go through my morning ritual. Okay. Yeah. Uh, dawn will happen. Ian, you, you don't feel like you've been given an answer or any guidance or you're not sure um, throughout your prayers. Another, you know, about an hour and a half goes by. And you can see the lightning, or not lightning, but the, the sky begins to lighten up as the sun is nearing rising. Um, you guys can begin your my, morning my final, ritual. My final thoughts before I, I, uh, I, I give up, I guess, um, are going to be, well, God of Tracking. Um, I guess this is, this is your way of uh, giving... A possible mission to someone needing needing a purpose and then I get up and do my morning rituals also and wake up the other guys if they're not awake yet okay uh, yeah so you guys are awake um, Greybeard is probably still sleeping at this point I assume you're not getting up at dawn no. -uh. In your room at the six windows, which was just a silver piece for you guys to say there. Um, mm -hmm. So I assume you're in a room snoring somewhere. And then coffee, what's your schedule looking like? Is the Are dwarf asleep? Up at, yeah, he's. you can hear him snoring. All right. I'll trance in that room. Okay. Um, all the way, you get up at dawn or not getting up at dawn or how long are you going to stay there? What time do we go to bed? It was probably about 3.30ish, 4 o'clock in the morning. I wake him up at 7. <laughs> okay. How do you try to wake Greybeard up? <laughs> bucket, bucket of cold water, bucket of cold water. Warm water. <laughs> uh... I just uh, say, wake up, dwarf. Time to go. Should we do like a, a perception check with a big negative? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You do remember I, that he drank a lot. I kicked the bed. Did he wake you up? <laughs> All right. Through his pack. Where's my pixie dust? Ooh. Graybeard is the pixie dust Ooh. in the pack. I sent you a note last week, man. <laughs> there, let me look. He snorted at all. That's why he's snoring. Oh, okay, so go ahead and give me a... Let's see. Searching. So that would be... An investigation check, Coffee. As you look through the pack. But remember that drug mul mules often hide things in balloons and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, you look through the pack and you, you're not finding the pixie dust. You're, or any what do I find really. in the pack? Oh, jeez, I'd have to look at his character sheet. Let me look. Moldy dwarven cheese. Let's see what he has listed in his pack. He has things like some common clothes, some rope, some brass runes, um, lots of stuff that you would expect to see in an explorer's pack, uh, some half-eaten rations. Uh... I take it and I put it outside his door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The whole thing? Yep. All right. It appears like he's going to be sleeping for a while. Okay, and then I leave. Okay. Now, you did know where the group was going approximately. Um, and you know you're not too far from where they were going to be camping. So, just so it would be something you wouldn't know. Okay. But as you walk out of the... Are you going to stay at six windows or are you going to head out? No, I'll head out. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, as you walk out the six windows, you can see the sky is turning much brighter. Sun's about to peak up over the the eastern horizon. And uh, a little chilly in the morning. All right. Where would you like to go? Uh, where, w where was I supposed to be meeting them? Um, well, you knew they were camping here. I believe you told them you were going to be watching Greybeard, or at least you told Finn, probably, that you'd be watching Greybeard, who was drinking down at the tavern. So they knew the last place they saw you guys was at the tavern. And you kind of know where their camp is. But other than that, you don't know of any of the events of the evening. Or I don't know if they, they would not know necessarily character-wise that you went to the six windows for a room. Okay. I'm going to um, go to the local uh, shop and get some supplies. Okay. Yeah, as you start to head down the, the road, um, you see lights starting to, you know, other there's um, different people starting to get out in the field. You can hear people that are feeding different animals. Um, there's different, uh, you can hear horses quite a bit too, either being fed or starting to be walked. So the, the town is starting to wake up. It seems to be a kind of an early rise town. And you do recall um, when you were walking through town that you did see, um, there were a couple of different types of merchant shops, but um, there was a lion share coster, which is usually like a, <clears throat> a place where, you know, adventurers go to get restocked. There was Lots of different types of shops for selling saddles or uh, things that have to do with horses, those kinds of things. So what type of thing are you looking to get? There's arcane wares. Arcane wares. Such as like ingredients? Scrolls and such paper. Paper. All right. Um you don't recall seeing anything like that, so I'll let you begin to head towards town, and you can start looking around, um, and you'll be able to see if you see anything. Okay. And then we'll come back to you on that one. Um, so we'll put you at the center of town for the moment. Go ahead and drag your guy there. And you're just kind of wandering around looking at the different types of buildings at the moment. Okay, uh, our group in the woods, right about the same time. He's probably heading 
south down the road as you guys are rolling up your blankets and packing your things. So what's the group in the uh, Garon Slumber doing? I'm actually going to head over towards the inn or somewhere out of the woods where I can... So I'll go to the inn first. If they're open, I'll see if they have breakfast. And if they're closed, I'll go across the way and see if there's an area outside of the woods that I can light a small fire to cook breakfast. Okay. Um, You know probably... Yeah, uh, the place that would be serving breakfast would probably be... Let me find the name of that again. The North Shield House, for sure, which is uh, kind of like the middle level in, and t- it has up food and things like that. And then there was also the... Uh, that one. There's a lot of buildings here. Let me get to the right spot. Uh, the North Shield Inn works. Uh... I can head to that one. Okay, yeah. So that is the building. I'll ping it right here. Okay. And yeah, you can head over there. And so, okay, so you guys see Ardra start to walk off, heading over, starting to head towards town. Rest of the group? Uh, I'm going to look to everybody else and just kind of ask if, uh, do we need, do we have any other business here in the, in the forest? Do you want to look for tracks again? Now that there's light? Um, or yeah, are you, sure. are you confident yeah. that he disappeared? I'm, I feel pretty good. <clears throat> I feel pretty good saying that he disappeared. They were hard to see just in general they yeah i i don't think i could do better i could track better they we just went straight west and then nothing else i think our time would be better spent going through our agenda in town all right so daryl is gonna nod um and uh just indicate that he needs to to do a little bit of shopping uh, in the town, and he's gonna head over. Before he heads that way, he's gonna suggest that uh, maybe we meet up at the, the inn that we were at the night before. Um, the where tavern? we all split up. Was it a tavern or an inn? It was a tavern. Right, it was the, uh, fuck, did I write it down? Right west, Green Emerald Cafe was an it, right? That's another one. Uh, it was called. Six Windows. It's a cheap place. Tribor Arms Tavern. Yeah, the Tribor Arms Tavern. It's uh, right here. First building. Yeah, as yeah, you yeah. Were Coming into town. Yeah. And okay. I, I did let everyone know before I was walking off to get breakfast where I was going to. I didn't just like walk away. <laughs> <laughs> just go on. Peace out. <laughs> Forgot that little piece. I figured. Then, um, then I will speak with uh, Doratha Shandril and locate our uh, wayward uh, coin recipient in town so that we may deliver that and relieve ourselves of that quest. I'll follow you. I'll go do that since I'm the one that adds everything, in case you forget the name. I'll, okay. I'll tag along. So as they're doing that, um, Jarl's going to look for a place in town to pick up, um, I guess, their healing kits. Is that what they are? Uh, yeah, there's something called a healing kit, I believe. I think. A healer kit. Heal... healer's kit yeah does anybody have those in town or I guess would I know where to to look for that or would I just be wandering around town um well yeah you'd have to check around town I mean there's probably I'm thinking there might be a couple places that might sell it so 
Uh, yeah, so it, you'd search around town a little bit, and then uh, we could find that. So as <laughs> so as I'm searching around town, um, I'm going to also be um, kind of mapping the place out. with my cartographer's tools and such. Okay. Do you need me to make um, a roll for that or? Um, no, I don't think it's something that you'd have to roll. It will be something that takes some time. It's not like something that's just, uh, um, I don't know. I, I would, I would think it would probably take, you're kind of like taking notes and then you're going to need at least an hour or maybe a little more to sit down and then, really draw it out yeah i could draw it out later i'm more just kind of taking notes on where things are just generally yeah, that's fine okay um so where where would i would i know um or get an idea of what um like what buildings i'm encountering as i'm looking for that or how would that work well you're seeing lots of stuff um, lots of lots of building and everybody kind of sees it as they go through town too um, you see signs on the outside of buildings y you don't necessarily know what they are you can make some guesses at stuff but I mean you're seeing stuff like um, you know the happy horse ranch sign Wainwright's wagons the lion's share which is the lion shield costers um, the cart and coin the Tribor Travelers, North Shield House, Oathiver's Harness Shop, the Talking Troll, uh, the Frost Touched Frog, the Six Windows, which was the building you guys have ever, you know that to be a uh, inn, Boar's Rest, the Tribor Arms, Oldeneth's Arms, Fohammer's Forge, uh, Marivold Pony Park, in the Ever Wyvern House. These are all things that you guys are seeing as you're kind of moving around in town, looking at various things, or just taking note as you walk by. The Pleasing Platter. Um, I don't suppose there's an overlay. And then cottages, and then, <laughs> yeah, just houses. Say that again? Sticking the same thing. I don't suppose there's an overlay on the map for that. <laughs> an overlay. Yeah, like a, a different a layer. Labels. GM layer just to kind of indicate which house is which. Yeah, I have a well, I have numbers and uh, letters okay. to tell me what what's what. Yeah. Um. But no, they did not put the names of everything because there's just too much here, and there's lots of little houses, shacks, cottages. Um. Obviously, it's residences mixed in with all of the buildings. Anything that's a bigger building is usually some type of either in tavern or merchant. And then these other kind of buildings that are a little bit smaller are gonna be typically the cottages and farms that are interspersed. So these are all just like cottages and farms and stuff. So but anything that's bigger than that is typically going to be an inn, a tavern or a merchant of some sort. All right, so the, the establishments then, um, is that something maybe we could see or or maybe you can include it in a handout or something just the map with the 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 indicators on it and then maybe just send us something separately after the session just to kind of indicate which ones are you know merchants or whatever yeah just I think so we can it, yeah get once idea. you end up going there yeah yep. yeah okay yeah right now it's a it's a bunch of buildings you guys have never been to for the most part well, a couple, two of you have been here before, but as passing through, but you don't really have an idea of what all this stuff is yet. Right, right. I would have been like writing down the names of the buildings as I'm walking by them, just to kind of know where they are. So if somebody was to reference it, you know, I could just look look that up or something. Um, okay, notes. yeah, that makes sense. So when, yeah, if somebody says or gives you a piece of information, I'll point it out for sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, so he's just going to, Charles just going to look around for... Uh, a place that sells healing kits he'll probably grab um i don't know how much they are but assuming they're like you know five or ten gold he'll probably pick up a couple 
Uh, yeah, you'll pick. He'll he'll pick up one or two. Just if if you know what the prices are, just let me know, and I'll I'll let you know how many. He's gonna pick up at least one. Uh, no, I'll have to look it up. I did not know those equipment prices. Okay. They're they're a solid five gold pieces oh, in yeah? the book. Yeah, so I'm assuming they get marked up though. So however much. Well, it's just how much. Yeah, you can haggle, and then if it's good, it go. If it's good, it comes down. If you don't haggle so well, it goes up. Okay, so yeah, I'll pick up five then. Um. Okay. Yeah. So you're the only place that's going to have them as you're going to check through, and it takes a while for you to look at different places. So this takes you time to find it, but you do eventually find that the. Uh, Name of it the lion share mm -hmm. coster would have it. They're the people that kind of stock stuff that adventurers would typically use. And where are they? It is. Oh, yeah, yeah, this building here is the lion share. It's called the lion share. And yeah, there's a person in there um, that you talk with and uh, it's a woman and her husband. Um, and so go ahead and give me a, let's see what role would that be? I think it is persuasion to see if you can lower the price or if they haggle you up. It's the one I took a piece out of. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, oh, man, that's even worse. Yeah, that's really bad. So wow. we're going to say <laughs> they're actually. Jarl's a little grumpy from getting woken up there. before he finished his sleep. So they are pretty firm that they're only selling these because they're just about out of them. And they're going to sell them at 10 gold apiece. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. Getting That's highway robbery. Ripped getting ripped off. That's amazing. Good job, Charles. Charles is just going to look dumbfounded at him. <laughs> it's, it, and and the, the, the woman is like, it's a, she just kind of gives you the shrug of the shoulders. And she realizes that a lot of times adventurers have more money than anybody else. And uh, she says, well, you know, supply and demand. It's in low supply and high demand. I, I am but a, a mere monk. I, I, I do not have a lot of these things. I don't value right, currency. Bro. I'm just trying to make sure that my comrades are alive. <laughs> you crit failed it, man. You, there's no saving it. And she definitely <laughs> gives you a fake concerned look like the she's trying to sympathize with you a little bit but again she knows you're an adventurer and adventurers are always strapped with cash and if you're not you're just one adventure away from having a whole bunch of it hmm. <laughs> really they will That's i'll amazing. buy one okay yeah mark it off and okay. go ahead and mark your gold off and you do catch her name is Alustra Olgar, a human female. Um, and they run the shop, the lion share. She runs the shop with Nerith. And, and you can tell this building is actually well maintained. Um, they obviously do a lot of business here. And their business is pretty booming. They're definitely in an area where a lot of adventurers come in, get outfitted, and then go back out. So it's a, it's a nice establishment. Well stocked. <laughs> Except for healing kids. <laughs> well, she had, she had the number you wanted, just not the, uh, the price you were looking for. Mm. That's amazing. I love it. So Jaws is going <laughs> to... Comment. I don't understand how you stay in business. He's just gonna turn away and walk out. Swishing his hair as he goes. Yeah, and then uh, 
they uh, as you're walking out, you don't quite see it, but the the camera pans and you see those two look at each other, and then and the one says, "Do you think that was a drow?" And the other one looks at her and says, "Couldn't have been a drow. I don't think that'd be a drow." <laughs> and we move on. <laughs> um, Finn and Ian, you would have made it to the center area pretty easily, so you would already be able to talk to. Uh, so you make it to the keep, and it is kind of like a, almost like a tower in the center of town, the market square and tower. And uh, when you get there, there are two guards standing outside, and uh, as you ask to uh, see the Lord Protector, um, they walk you into this keep, which is definitely just a kind of like a barracks and weapons area and more like an office um, in an area for this Lord Protector, which you do know as uh, Darathra Shindral. And you're brought to her room where she's sitting behind a table and having starting breakfast as you walk in. Can I say before, before we start this RP, um, can I say that I went back um, before we left the forest and picked up the ranger stuff, if it was still there. Yes, yep. And it was still there, and you were able to pick up the stuff. All right. Cool. Back to Jaroth or Shendra. All right. Um... And yeah, so she's, you can see a uh, human, um, long uh, black hair, uh, brown eyes. Uh, it's kind of done in a ponytail, but she does wear the outfit of uh, somebody who definitely carries herself as she knows she's a warrior of some type, a fighter of some type, has the look of somebody who knows their way around um, weapons and armor and such. And she waves you to a couple of chairs that are in the room and and uh, she, Finn, do you wear anything that mentions the group you're a part of? No. All right. Does she? Nope. Okay. <laughs> then I will just uh, introduce myself and say, Lady Dorothra, we are, or Lady Shendral, we are here, newcomers in town with a, uh, a mission to find it was the Featherstones. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. To deliver to deliver news and uh, a uh, a small amount of funding for them from their relatives. She says, "Oh, okay. Um, well, Marcus and Florencia live." Uh, just south of the Six Windows Inn. Do you know where that's at? She asked you. I do. Yeah, they're the house that's just straight south of them as you're uh, heading back over there. You'll see it on your left as you're going back towards the Six Windows. And they just live in a farm that they rent. Um, it ends up being this one on the map. Okay. Um, and that's where they reside. It's uh, Marcos F uh, Featherstone and Florencia Featherstone. Um, we'd also like to, to bring up that we, uh, we stayed last night in the forest just behind the Six Windows Inn and had an odd occurrence uh, happen to one of the other folks, one of the rangers who were camping there. And I'll motion to, to the bundle that Ian has. <coughs> All right. And so you show her the stuff, Ian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as you lay the stuff out, she kind of picks the bow up and she and she looks at the bow and and she says, "Yeah, I, I recognize this. This this looks like Grimma's bow." You say she wasn't there? No. Um I heard in the middle of the night around I guess a little bit past midnight. I heard um some sort of rustling in the direction of the rangers, I guess, Grimma's campsite. Um, and by the time I arrived there, 
it seemed as though it, no one was there and it seemed as it was untouched. However, on closer inspection, I discovered tracks, one of a human-esque, a humanoid being dragged and um, tracks of some being, something I've never, I don't, I didn't recognize. She kind of looks at you gravely and then, she, and she sits back down. And as she's sitting back down, uh, Finn, that's when you do notice the the belt buckle does catch your eye that you didn't see as you walked in. And it does have um, like this very small silver button that sits in the center of the belt buckle. And it is of the silver harp. And she sits back down and then uh, she says... I don't think Grimma would just leave her things. That concerns me. And she's and she sits back and she says, I mean, I know there's always the, the fairy tales and the folklore of, you know, people seeing gods walk in those woods, but it's you know, it's no different than Saint Nicholas or uh, you know, ghosts or any things like that. I mean, it's they're all just things to scare children or um they're just stories typically. I don't know. If, if that person wasn't there, you think you saw or heard something, then something must be going on. And uh, she mentions, let me get to the right spot, that maybe you should go and find Z Zindra Winterbell and have her take a look and see if she can find the track. She's probably the best tracker that's in town. Um, and she might be able to pick up on something that you might have missed. Ouch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got to look right at her and say, don't you know who I am? Don't you know who I am? I am I'm the, I'm the hero of, of Northstone. <laughs> I'm Northstone. Or Nightstone. Nightstone, yeah. Um, just like insulting that Nat 20, man. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Where could we find Zendra Winterbow? Would she be um, in the Tribor oh, Tavern? Well, what is it called again? Yeah, that's usually Tribor. where she stays looking, waiting for work if she's not been hired to uh, lead a group either to any of the areas around here or escort a caravan. But normally that's where she stays until she has a job. Isn't that the name of the person that you talked to, then? I don't remember. I, I wrote a bunch of stuff down last week on my notepad, my game, uh, or my text notepad, and apparently I did not save it before I quit. Oh, she sure is. I wrote it down. Yeah, part of the Emerald Enclave. Lead groups around Hill Giants. In the tavern. And, and the Barbarians, yes, the one who told you about the Barbarians and the Giants. Yeah, All right. yeah it's, it's a name you recognize, Zindra Winterbell. Yeah, half elf scout, half elf. Uh... You know, sounds familiar. Um, is there? Have there any? I ask um, uh, Shendra if ha has anything like this happened before, where someone disappears with their weapon still in the forests, or any. So there's nothing that's been reported. Uh, Triboard's obviously, uh, or, or she said, and she looks at you and she say, or you may not know, obviously that. Um, this is kind of a crossroads where lots of groups of people will stop here before moving on. So it's, it's very common for people to be here only a night and then move on. Um, we haven't had anybody report anything like this. Um, do people go out there and sleep? Yeah. Lots of different people will come into town and go out there and sleep um, as they've heard the stories of the, um, you know, the different fairy tales or legends or myths or whatever it is they believe in. Uh, and you can you get the the impression that she's a, a real pragmatist. Pra, uh, what's that word? Um, I can't say it. Pragmatist. 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 There we go. She she doesn't seem to put a lot of faith in gods and and um, things like that. So she's she's more of just what she can see, she believes in kind of person. Um, very business like, very straightforward. Have there been any, um, we come from, we've traveled from Nightstone, 
um, and uh, to go visit the Featherstones have, and we've heard tale of a lot of disturbing news um, on their travels here. Has there been any any odd occurrences happening? Any anything out of the usual happening around Tribor? And she kind of says, "Yeah, we've definitely had an uh, increase in activity. That sounds like it's been happening all over the north. I've had to send a, a few of our." Um, mounted cavalry out to deal with hill giants or ogres or things of this nature that have been out near the the ranches on the outskirts. Uh, you know that this town is surrounded by large uh, horse ranches that are all to the the northwest and the and the southeast. There's all kinds of different ranches that breed horses and stuff. It's a big area for it. Um, and she has a group of what do they call them? You guys would know this. Uh... She has a militia, and they're known of, and you've heard people even mention it or have heard the name. They call them the Twelve, and it's kind of like a, a mounted police force that they use to not only make sure everything is safe in town, but they will often patrol out towards the ranches out on the outskirts, which can be anywhere from, you know, a mile all the way up to maybe 20, 30 miles out. And that kind of confirms the same thing you heard. What That was kind of very similar to um, what Zendra told you, Winterbow, of the increased sightings of, you know, hill giants and ogres here and there. And um, they even said the, I want to say it was the Ugart, is that how you say it? Yeah, the Ugarts. The Ugarts barbarians, which is just like a you know a human Ugarth. kind of barbarian clan. Um, is what did she say? Grim Grimma Grim Grimma looked like. What was she like? Uh, human. Definitely wore, wore the clothes of a ranger, had the bow, um, just brown hair, brown eyes, uh, kind of regular height, maybe like a 5'6", um, lean build. That was about as much as you, because when you passed by, it wasn't like you were, you just noticed her, but you didn't necessarily stop and talk to them or, you know. So it was just female? a quick cursory. Yeah, yep, it was female. So was the scout. Uh, Femke was the scout you talked to. The second person you talked to was also female. Femke, that's a different name than you gave me last week. Uh, um, okay, sweet. Um, well, that's all, all the business I have. I, I don't know if there's a, a code word or anything like that, Dan, but I will compliment her on her belt buckle and uh, inform her that I also uh, play the harp or something to that effect. So that yeah, she... there, there, there's like a phrase that would be pretty innoxious that would immediately, that, that is common for um, agents to be able to say to them, even if somebody was standing right there, they wouldn't quite know what you were, you know, it's like, you know, the weather, the weather seemed chilly this morning or something very similar to that. And then she kind of gives you that nod of understanding and realizes that you're of the group too. Doesn't say more, not no. knowing if, yeah. We will beg our leave and uh, make our way outside, either to Featherstones or the inn. Okay. Um, so that would take about as much time. That's about the time that um, Jarl is haggling with uh, trying to get his healing kits. Um, Ardrith, by during that same conversation time, you would have been sitting down and probably eating your food at that point, or the food would just be coming to your table. So you can use that menu we used before and grab something from that, or if you just want to grab like the the special for the day, it would just probably be like a um, maybe just a silver for a, a, a you know a nice meal and a drink of some sort. I'll go for that. And beer. coffee, real quick. Uh, Graybeard, we're going to say you're still sleeping at this point because it's really not that much past daybreak yet. 
coffee you've been wandering around town um you've seen the others either going to different buildings or heading around um was there anything you were looking for specific oh you were looking for places that might sell um you're not seeing anything with a name that stands out to you like it would be a place of arcane studies um let's see is there there's one place that let's see where's this at if you let me see if you would have gotten there or not uh, no you're not everything you're seeing is blacksmiths and saddle makers and outfitters um, this is clearly a town of, you know, horse ranches and caravans that are passing through. And everything you're seeing is stuff, you know, like Wainwrights and, and things that fix wagons or carts and those kinds of things. You're not seeing anything of the more scholarly type at the moment. Okay. You might have to ask around to see if there would be anything that maybe you're not noticing. Sounds good. Um, and that the, you, you, it'll just be that you've wandered around town. You have a good idea of the town at this point. You've seen a lot of the buildings. You're seeing a lot of the people moving around. Um, there's lots of activity at this point. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take our first 10-minute uh, break. And then we'll probably skip ahead maybe an hour or two when the group would be about time to meet back up and then see what the group's going to do.